And I think the clarity in this book is profound. Yeah. 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 One of the main major things in this book and that is like a response to the major error in the world around healing is that healing is of the mind. Healing is always mental and, and it's distorted in the world because it's always the focus on the form, fixing the form, fixing the form, which is actually perpetuating the error. It perpetuates the belief that you are the body, that the world is your home and you know, all of that. It's, it's the wrong focus, basically. So healing is to redirect the focus. Right. Yeah. And this moment is your miracle. I, we were talking this morning. I'm hoping there may be a program um, that comes on where Jenny or somebody reads sections of this book. It is the way that you have put it into words. There's so much clarity with it. Mm. I don't know if you have anything prepared. I know I'm going to put you on the spot <laughs> here. Um, do you have anything from the wow. healing section that you read? Because it was so profound. And I think it might be helpful for others. There was some that came to my mind. Okay, great. Um, well, I can read a couple of shorter pieces. Or maybe, yeah, I have two or three. We have the metaphysics behind sickness, mm -hmm. which we, we touched on, but it's uh, like this. Because we believe we have pulled away from, uh, from God and separated from our home in heaven, we believe that there could be some punishment or retribution, some price to pay. This fear of retribution from God is unconscious because of this and being aware of the truth that I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts the mind is actually afraid of healing. And this is why it makes itself sick. It's saying this body is real, it is my identity. It strengthens our belief in the body's identity rather than the and mind. And I'm not innocent. Right. And I'm not innocent. That's the core. So I need to be punished. Yeah. It's and, sick. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> I mean, it's such a yeah. dysfunctional way of looking at everything. Yeah. yeah. And then it's the evidence when the body gets sick. It's like, okay, God, Truth. yeah. I'm bad. Yeah, and I am separate from God, and God, God's reality is not real. This sick reality is real because the body is the proof, yeah. you know? That's where it goes. And then the problem, why? because many people say, why don't I get healed? Why doesn't oh, healing come? I prayed a, for years, and, you know? It's a hornet's nest. Yeah. <laughs> I got the answer here. We put it in the book. Please share. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll read it. Let's take a look at a scenario which could have a transcending nature for you if you yearn for healing. So a patient typically goes to a doctor or a therapist because he wants a magical shift. He wants a better life in form. He wants a doctor to magically take away his problem, his difficulties, his pain, and his symptoms, and herein lies the problem. Getting a better life in form is just a temporary shift. It can never be lasting. And the true healer, the Holy Spirit, is the real therapist and the doctor. However, the patient thinks twice about going to this doctor, <laughs> to, to the Holy Spirit's healing, because the Holy Spirit requires a complete shift. Yes. It means that he would have the patient would have his self-concept completely dismantled in his entire world. And he might think, I didn't ask you to take my life away. I asked you to make it better. <laughs> Give me a better life. Give me a better illusion instead of the dismantling. Oh my God. Because of the fear of loss of his life as he knows it, the patient would not trust the Holy Spirit. So the sickness and the temporary fixes churn on and on. I hope you got this. I hope you got this. <laughs> this is profound because this is, and I must say, I went through terror. I mean, I was in hospice. How much more terror can you go through? I tell you, the decision to give up my life, hmm. that was terrifying. It, it, there was some ease in hospice, you know? They would take care of everything for you. They were just going to transition you out. Bye-bye. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then I made a decision. Okay, I'm going to change everything. I am going to literally give up what I think brings me pleasure. Mm. And coming into community, and I had to face some really horrible, I mean, what I was holding is this, I can't do this. You know, I gave up my dogs. Mm. They were my life. Mm. But the reality was I had to be willing to turn it all over. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what she's saying here. And this, this goes with anyone that wants to make any change in their life, whether they want a happier relationship or more money or, I mean, fill in the blank of your disease, yeah. your disease. And when you share that, I just want to say how simple it is in a way, because it is the Holy Spirit's answer is in the moment. You know? <laughs> it's now we decide. Yeah. It's in the moment. It's now we heal. It's not the big, you know, timeline thing that it's going to take time. And I, I must say, uh, this is relatively <laughs> recent that I'm really kind of coming into this. Where are you? What are you mm -hmm. thinking right now? Mm -hmm. Where are you right now? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the key. Wow. That's the key. Because if there is any little darkness in there, doubt thoughts, a self, you know, I think it's often like self-punishment and... <laughs> self-doubt and the unworthiness yeah those kind of thoughts running and if that's there that is actually the choice for sickness so in that moment to just be open to because it's not even our job to change it's just our job to be willing to change and then right. invite the light invite the spirit and holy spirit can only be here in this moment yeah because holy spirit isn't on a timeline mm -hmm. Can only be experienced now. Now, <laughs> yeah. right now.